this video is intended for students who have already begun to learn the anatomy of the kidney and want to see how much they have retained. So I'm going to ask a series of questions, give you time to think of the answer before I tell you. If you're interested in knowing what terms might come up in this video, look in the description, I have a word bank. I want you to think, what is the name of the outermost layer? And then even though we can't see it on this model, outside of this layer, there's a layer of fat. I also want you to think of this layer and the inner layer. So the outermost layer of fat that we can't see here is the perirenal fat capsule. Underneath the perirenal fat capsule is the renal capsule, which is just a connective tissue. Then this lighter outer layer is the renal cortex and then this darker inner layer is the renal medulla. So remember, a cortex is always an outer layer, a medulla is always an inner layer. Now I want you to think, what are the names of these individual triangles? And what are the names of the lumps on the end of the triangles? And if you take one triangle and pair it with the cortex that's over top of it, what do you call it then? So each of these is a renal pyramid. At the end of a pyramid, the little nub is the renal papilla. Papilla is always a nub. And if you take one renal pyramid and combine it with the bit of cortex over top, now you have a renal lobe. Next, I want you to think um, there's some tissue in between the individual renal pyramids. What do we call that? Those are renal columns. So we said the nubs at the end are the renal papilla. Um, basically, you have urine dripping out of the renal papilla, and that drips into this. And then those combine to make these. And then multiple of those combine to make something else. And then they exit the kidney. So the renal papilla drips urine into a minor calyx. The minor calyces combine to make major calyces. And when all of your major calyces come together, you have your renal pelvis. And when your renal pelvis tapers off and exits the kidney, now we call it the ureter. So where the ureter is exiting the kidney and where the arteries are entering, there's a little indent um, that has a name. And then if I ripped out all of this stuff in here, there would be a space left over that has a name. So the indent is the renal hilum. And the space that would be in here, if you took everything out, is the renal sinus. Before we move on to this, which is just an enlarged lobe, I want to talk about blood flow. The artery entering the kidney is the renal artery. The renal artery divides into many segmental arteries. The segmental arteries give branches that come up here. Those are inter lobar arteries because they're between the lobes. Then those interlobar arteries 
kind of make a curving shape and kind of go over the top of the pyramid. Those are arcuate arteries. Just think they're making an arc. And then off of the arcuate arteries, you have multiple arteries going straight up. Those are cortical radiate because they are radiating into the cortex. Now, um, this is where we have to go over to this model to continue the blood flow. So this artery here would be the arcuate artery. Where it juts up would be the cortical radiate artery. Now, off of the cortical radiate artery, um, well, what are these little white balls we haven't talked about yet? Those little white balls are renal corpuscles. So off of the cortical radiate artery, there's a little artery going to the renal corpuscle. That is the afferent artery. Afferent with an A, it is going to the corpuscle. Then exiting the corpuscle is the efferent artery. Now, those end up forming a network of capillaries called the peritubular capillaries um, because we haven't talked about it yet, but the nephron is a series of tubes and these capillaries surround the tubes of the nephron. Um, so you have your peritubular capillaries and they lead into a vein called the same as the artery. So it is the cortical radiate vein. The cortical radiate veins lead into arcuate veins. The arcuate veins go to the interlobar veins. Now this is the one thing that I have looked at it a million times and I cannot figure it out. Um, there are no segmental veins. There are only interlobar veins and they meet up at the renal vein. I don't understand why because every picture I've looked at it looks like it's doing the same thing like you have multiple interlobar meeting up. It looks like they should be segmental veins but they're not so I just have to smile nod and agree. No segmental veins and have never found a good reason why. All right, so that takes care of our blood flow. Now we can move over to the renal lobe. So review, we said the fat on the outside that we can't see is the perirenal fat capsule. This layer here is the renal capsule, renal cortex, renal pyramid, Cortex plus pyramid is the renal lobe. At the end of each pyramid is a renal papilla. So the functional unit of the kidney is the nephron. Those are the urine producing units. Can you think what are the parts of the nephron? So the part at the beginning these little balls we said was the renal corpuscle. Now this ball, they cut it open so you could see the different parts. The renal corpuscle is made up of two things. The outer part is the Bowman's capsule. The blood vessels in the middle are called the glomerulus. Now, what part of urine formation is happening here? This is where filtration is happening. Basically, the blood is getting forced into those little capillaries and it's like a little filter. And a lot of the smaller things are getting filtered out. So once the liquid is filtered out of the blood, we no longer call it blood, what do we call it? 
filtrate. Then the filtrate filters through this, which is the proximal convoluted tubule because it is closer to the renal corpuscle. The fluid from the proximal convoluted tubule flows down. This whole thing is the loop of Henle. This is the descending limb, ascending limb, and then the ascending limb leads to this. This is the proximal convoluted tubule. This is the distal convoluted tubule. And the distal convoluted tubule meets up with this, which is the collecting duct. Now, when the fluid is in the collecting duct, what do we call it? It is still filtrate, it is not yet urine because there are things happening in the collecting duct. It is not the finished product yet. Now, you have multiple nephrons um, going to the collecting duct, and then the collecting duct, when it gets to this region, it is now the papillary duct. So even though we don't see it, there are many collecting ducts meeting up at that papillary duct. And this papillary duct is what is dripping urine out into, what do we call that thing? The minor calyx. All right, so those are the basic parts of a nephron. Renal corpuscle, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, and then they meet up at a collecting duct. Now, there are two types of nephrons that are based on length. We have short ones and long ones. The short ones are cortical nephrons because they are closer to the cortex. The long ones are called juxta medullary nephrons because they are next to the medulla. And I believe the split is 80% uh, cortical, 20% juxtamedullary. Um, and without your juxtamedullary nephrons, you would not be able to make concentrated urine. So one more time with blood vessels. Uh, what would we call this vessel? So this is an afferent artery because it's going to the renal corpuscle. This vessel is an efferent artery because it is going away. So you have to find the cortical radiate to decide is it going to or away. So the last part of the model is this. Um, this is just an enlarged renal corpuscle. So before we said there are two parts of the renal corpuscle. The outer part was the Bowman's capsule. The blood vessels on the inside, that was the glomerulus. But what I didn't say was the Bowman's capsule actually has two parts. So there's this outer layer, but there's also a layer that is clinging to the glomerulus. So on this part of the model, they like peeled off that layer. Um, this is the other layer of the Bowman's capsule. So the outer layer is the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. The part touching the blood vessels is the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. And what do we call the actual little cells that make up the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule? So those are called podocytes because they have little kind of like feet-like extensions and they form part of the filtration membrane so 
the fluid from the blood is getting filtered out through those slits. Now, how do we tell which is the afferent and which is the efferent? So we can tell that this is the afferent for two reasons. One, it's bigger than the efferent that's exiting it. The exiting one is more narrow. Why? because if you make a more narrow exit, that kind of slows things down in here. So there's more time for things to get filtered out. And also, there's a collection of cells here that you only see on the afferent arterial. So these are juxta glomerular cells because they're next to the glomerulus. And what do they sense? They are baroreceptors, meaning they respond to pressure and they will change in diameter. So they are baroreceptors, which means they respond to pressure. So they respond to blood pressure and their job is to help regulate the pressure inside of the glomerulus to regulate the filtration rate coming out of the glomerulus because if the pressure is too low you're not going to filter enough if the pressure is high um, just think about forcing things through a filter you're going to damage the filter you don't want the pressure in here to be too high so exiting this would be the beginning of the proximal convoluted tubule all right and then last question is what is this tube and what are the cells inside of the tube? So this tube here is part of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. The cells inside of the tube are the macula densa. The macula densa and these cells, which were the juxtaglomerular cells, make up the juxtaglomerular apparatus which help control the filtration rate of the glomerulus, help control the GFR. All right, so those are all of the questions I have about the kidney. I hope that was helpful. Have a great day and have fun learning.